Greetings fellow maker! In this video I'll show you how I made the Destiny Sweeper Bot undersuit and attached all the armor pieces. I really like the look of those fabric printed leggings and bodysuits. I think they can add a lot of cool detail to a costume. For Sweepy's undersuit, I wanted to try out the process of designing a pattern that would then be printed onto fabric. For my sewing skill level, this was super ambitious, but I went into the build expecting things to not go quite as planned. And as long as I learned something, I would consider it to be a success. I ordered a sample pack of fabric from the fabric printing company Spoonflower. Since I don't know much about fabric types, it was great to learn a bit about fabric names and how they feel and stretch. The Sport Lycra seemed perfect for my needs, since it stretched in both directions and felt like those stretchy leggings. I needed to make some kind of sacrificial bodysuit that would be custom fit to me and have placeholder details sketched on to be cut apart into a new pattern. For some of my previous cosplays, I've purchased bodysuits used for Halloween costumes. I got a white one on sale that I'll use to draw on my undersuit template. It seemed to be a thinner, more delicate version of the Sport Lycra and had what I thought was about the same amount of stretchiness. The woman's size in large fits me pretty well, I just need to take in the sides a bit. The area that needed to be taken in was traced and pinned with my sewing helper's assistance. I searched around online for information on sewing stretchy fabrics. There are special needle sizes that help with the stitching process, and there are certain sewing stitches that allow elastic fabric to stretch. In my sewing machine's manual, I picked out a stitch to use. I planned on doing my test fittings in a zigzag utility stitch, then the final version in what they called a knit stitch, recommended for swimwear. The guideline was traced on and I tried out that utility stitch, gently guiding the fabric through my sewing machine, trying to let the feed dogs do all the work. I cut off the excess material and used that as a guide to trace on the other side of my bodysuit. I'm taking in both sides so the bodysuit will sit correctly. I'll only be drawing on one half of the suit since I'll mirror the designs digitally. Now the suit fits much better. I didn't include fingered gloves in my design since I bought removable gloves that will slip on over the undersuit. All the seams were marked so I could reference them in Photoshop. In hindsight, I should have included registration marks. There's little triangle things that sewing patterns use. I think the triangles get cut with the seam allowance and help match up the seams later. I still need to learn about how all that works. After the seams were all highlighted, I tried on pieces of my armor with a bodysuit and marked with a different color where the designs would be drawn. As the process went on, my sketches got pretty rough, but I wasn't too concerned. This will be under all my armor and doesn't have to be too accurate. All the new seam lines were cut and the actual seams were carefully separated with a seam ripper. This let the pattern lay completely flat. The templates were fit onto my large cutting mat, smoothing out the material, and I took a cell phone picture from above at the most parallel angle I could. In Photoshop, I created a new file with Spoonflower's suggested size and resolution with RGB color. Under View Show, there's a grid that I used for a one inch size reference. I added my images and scaled them until the centers of the images matched the grid size. There's a bit of warping on the edges of the picture that I aligned with the transform skew option. Extra Photoshop layers were added and I started drawing out my bodysuit lines. There's a seam line just for reference and an inseam line, which is the line that will be cut out. I did draw my details all the way out to the inseam line. Spoonflower has a color map that I downloaded and imported into my color swatches. I also ordered a color guide so I could match up the digital color map to what it actually looks like on the printed fabric, which is super neat. The strange thing is I couldn't match the color guide numbers to the imported color map. There's a different guide to order called the color map, not the color guide, which has way more colors and matches the codes in the Photoshop color swatches. I think the color guide is used for designing simple patterns through their website interface, but I'm not sure. The color guide costs much less, but if matching color and material type is super important to your project, I'd go with the color map. I poked around with the different brush types and drew on some textures in different opacities. The brushes were layered on until the detail looked all right. I'm not too experienced with painting in Photoshop and I used a mouse, so I didn't get too detailed. 
The seam line was left on the print, which I probably should have just removed. I only need the inseam line to know where to cut the fabric. There's supposed to be more of those armor panels that look like textured foam on the back of the legs, so I added them to the actual undersuit by taking a picture of a floor mat and changing its color to orange. The patterns were rearranged to fit two of the spoon flower's yards of fabric, and the background was changed to a neutral gray so I could use the extra scrap material if needed. I uploaded my design one yard at a time to Spoonflower's website, then chose Sport Lycra in the Fabric drop-down menu. The pattern isn't repeated, so I picked Center and ordered one yard of each. After a few weeks of processing and shipping time, the fabric arrived! After dealing with the Halloween store bodysuit fabric, I was surprised at how nice the Sport Lycra felt. It's thicker and I became slightly concerned the fabric wouldn't stretch enough to fit. There's only one way to find out. I separated the fabric with a rotary cutter, which kind of terrified me. This wheel is super sharp and doesn't want to stop rolling for anything. I made sure to keep my hands out of the path of force. My original plan was to cut out the pieces with lots of extra inseam and then lightly zigzag stitch the pieces together, which I think is called basting. Then I could check the fit and adjust all the pieces before adding the final stitching and cutting away the extra inseam fabric. But such is cosplay life, I ran out of time. If I wanted to use this undersuit for Dragon Con, I had to sew this super fast with one try and I just went for it. If you have sewing experience, you may want to look away during my sewing process. I kind of brute forced my way through this build and it's not pretty. Thank you for being tolerant of me learning new skills. I went straight to the knit stitch and matched up the seams as best I could. I got a little better as I went along. The patterns were lined up and pinned together to the best of my ability. It's interesting that the fabric looks all sad and wrinkled until it gets stretched out. Then it looks pretty cool. The head hole got a normal straight stitch, which is what the original bodysuit had. I imagine if this part was elastic, it may slip back on the forehead. I didn't check my thread stockpile and I ran out of gray thread pretty quickly, so I had to use a really light gray. For the waistband, elastic was stitched into a fold in the leggings. I'm sure this isn't the best practice, but it kind of worked. Sew on snaps were attached to the top and pants of the bodysuit. Again, probably not the best solution, but at least I'll be prepared for my restroom needs at conventions. At this point, I definitely knew my bodysuit was fitting tighter than the original, so I kept every bit of my seam allowance on the back of the top, where I sewed on this monster zipper in a spectacular fashion. At least I remembered I had a special sewing foot to help with zippers and used a straight stitch. Funny story, after finishing the zipper, I forgot to switch the foot back. And when I changed the stitch back to the zigzag type stitches, I immediately snapped the needle and one of the shards bounced off my nose. Definitely a learning experience. Somehow this undersuit fits. Well, it's a little snug, but the circle thingies ended up mostly round and the lines actually match up in some spots. I sewed the pants first, which has the most misaligned areas. I could definitely see my improvement with the top half, especially around the neck area. It was so exciting to see this piece finally come together. In this footage, I've already added most of the armor attachments, so let me show you how I added the Velcro and the snaps. After trying on the chest piece, I started hot gluing on squishy upholstery foam to suspend the armor in place. Also adding one velcro attachment to the front to prevent the torso from sliding around. The loop side of the velcro will get sewn onto the bodysuit. While wearing the undersuit, I positioned the armor where I wanted it to rest and marked the velcro location right onto the fabric. All the Velcro that is attached to the bodysuit is the soft loop side of the Velcro, which won't catch on the material. I only stitched down the Velcro in the corners, making sure to leave room for the fabric to stretch. This sport lycra material is super robust and the single point stitches didn't rip free, which is awesome. I wanted the hip armor to come apart for travel, so more Velcro attachments were used. 
I go over the process of attaching nylon webbing to Velcro in the robot foot video in this series, which I'll link below. The same process of marking where the Velcro would attach to the bodysuit was used for all the armor pieces. Some of the armor was attached with sew-on snaps. These large snaps have a strong connection and let the connection rotate, which is great for my shoulder and upper leg pieces. One side of the snap was sewn onto a chunk of foam. To keep track of the left and right shoulders, I alternated which side of the snap would be attached to the bodysuit. That way, I couldn't accidentally attach the left side to the right side. I applied hot glue for the foam attachments and made sure to add extra glue to the edges to prevent any peeling. I thought I needed two thicknesses of foam to have the leg armor in the right spot, but I realized after wearing the costume that I wanted the legs to sit a little closer, so I cut away the extra thickness and re-glued the snaps in place. The other side of the snap was stitched right onto the fabric. Normally I'd sandwich in some non-stretchy fabric into these connections for added strength, like I did for my Assaultron costume, but this fabric seems fine. I only used snap connections where I wanted rotational movement. The rest of the armor was locked in place with Velcro. The forearms snug into place on my arms, but I knew the armor would wear at the undersuit over time, causing the fabric to fuzz and pill. I hot glued a scrap of old sweatshirt fabric that's nice and soft in the areas that would be constantly touching the undersuit. Upholstery foam kept my wrist area in the right place, and I glued on more squishy foam to the sides of the upper forearm connection. The bottom rib sections of the torso were scratching against my undersuit, so I attached more soft fabric. I purchased some form-fitting gloves and sewed on Velcro to the back of the hands. The other side of the Velcro was glued onto the hand plates. I ended up using elastic for the upper knee sections, and that actually worked great! I like to get a hold of some gray elastic to make this blend into the bodysuit more, but this totally works for now. I had so much fun wearing this costume at Dragon Con, and it's awesome how this robot frame is used all over the place in Destiny 2. Here's what I learned from my experience with creating a printed bodysuit. Every sewing issue I encountered probably has a better technique or tool to help make the process easier and cleaner. I just need to spend the time learning more about how to sew and the different kinds of sewing feet, needles, and other tools. For the sacrificial bodysuit, I think I should have used a pre-made pattern and made the whole thing from scratch with fabric that was closer to the Spoonflower's Sport Lycra. That way, the transferred pattern would fit better and I could learn the correct way to make all the pattern registrations. I probably should have had someone else draw the reference lines while I stood still wearing the suit, or put the suit on a body form while adding the lines. Most of my scribbles weren't accurate enough to transfer cleanly to the digital pattern. The printed fabric is originally white, so when it stretches, you can see some of the white threads, and the colors look lighter. Especially with my bodysuit fitting pretty snug, the colors looked lighter than I thought they would. I was pretty bold with the sewing process because I had a backup gray bodysuit standing by. If the custom printed undersuit was unwearable, I could paint some details on the gray bodysuit like I did for my assault run costume. Since I was rushing, I don't think I learned as much as I could have about proper sewing techniques. I'll have to allow more time for my next sewing project and look up stretch fabric tutorials. If you want to try out custom printed fabric, I suggest starting out with something a little simpler and maybe smaller than a full stretchy bodysuit. Maybe make a shirt or a dress, something not quite as form-fitting. For the amount of detail I ended up putting into my bodysuit, I don't know if it was necessary to get it printed. I could have painted on some of those details, although it certainly wouldn't look this clean. That looks nice and symmetrical. If the bodysuit is the main focus of the costume and has a lot of repeating patterns like a Spider-Man suit or Deadpool, I think that would be a really good example of something that would be perfect for fabric printing. While I was frantically trying to get Sweeperbot done for Dragon Con, Bill made Sweepy's Broom. He recorded the process, so look forward to that video in the future. Thank you for watching my Sweeperbot build. I'm so happy I got to share the build process with you and look forward to more costume experiments in the future.
Hey, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you don't miss any of our new weekly prop and costume tutorial videos. For more goodies, head over to our website where you'll find blueprints, tutorial books, articles, and more. We also have a second channel for our Q&A show and extra behind the scenes videos. Thanks again and happy crafting.